and we have linked up with Mike Augello. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Norman. I am well. Uh, how are you doing? Not too bad. The Leafs a 3-2 loser in overtime in St. Louis against the Blues, who just picked up their 11th straight victory. The Leafs forcing a tie in the third, taking it to overtime, getting the point, but mm -hmm. were virtually non-existent in the first period and basically the first portion of the game. It's the same old song and dance, Michael. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we've gotten used to the slow starts, and that's not 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 a good thing. And I mean, I heard Brian Burke on uh, on Sportsnet this morning say, you know, teams like Toronto, with the talent that they have, they can play bad for fifty five minutes and then wake up and score a couple goals, and you win the game. And you know, he said that that's a stupid thing to really depend on is to be, you know, complacent for a majority of the game and then just wake up and rely on your skill. And I mean, they really didn't wake up against Arizona. And last night, the first period, uh, St. Louis was clearly the better team, got up to nothing. You know, the Leafs had their chances. They started to turn around in the second period. Uh, and they tested Jordan Bennington, who's just playing unbelievable right now. And Freddie Anderson was great. He held them in the game for the, for the, you know, he held him in the game for the majority of the game. I mean, after it was two, nothing, he was really, really good. And then the Leafs get two goals in 30 some odd seconds from Hyman and from Matthews mm -hmm. to tie it up. The point is important, but the inconsistency that they have showed uh, off and on uh, recently is troubling, especially yep. going into the playoffs. The Leafs are better than most teams, even when they are mediocre. They're in survival mode right now. They're just keeping pace, trying to collect points. Sure, they won, what, five of seven mm -hmm. uh, recently, but big deal. Who cares? The Leafs should be ripping off 11 straight wins. That's how good this team can be, or we think it can be, and maybe we're a bunch of nutcases and we believe this team is better than it really is, even with, all the, star, even with all the star power. Right now, they are just making do. When does this team explode? And the other question is, can it explode between now and the end of this season? Well, I mean, they're not exactly wallowing in med mediocrity, but I heard I heard a stat yesterday, and it's sort of shake you shake your head at it. The, uh, they the, before the game against St. Louis, the last six losses that they had were against non playoff teams. You know, and if you think about it, the Rangers and you know, I mean, and Arizona. I mean, that that's that's a trend. Now you can say, well, great, they 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 get up for you know the good teams and they mm -hmm. perform well. And and you know, last night but, they yeah. it was part of the time. But the, you know, you you can't. It's it's not. It's illogical to expect them to be up for eighty two games. Yeah. But you expect them to be able to win the points that should be easy. Those Mike, are the points they gave up. Mike, the Patriots went eleven and five. 14 and five with that Super Bowl title. All five losses, and mm -hmm. you know this, came to non playoff teams. I know. How do you explain that? And how do you explain what's going on with this Maple Leafs team? Can you explain it other than chalking it up to sports? It's the way she goes. Well, I mean, I think throughout the year, the, and, it, and this is not a new thing, just not the la like a last month or last or post All Star break th thing. They, they've just been. I don't remember a game they put in a 60 minute effort and may, like I said, and they are extremely talented. They are deep. They are, you know, they're exciting, but there are games that, that they just disappear for long stretches and you come up against Boston in a playoff scenario. And that's, we're going to focus on that the next uh, six to seven weeks because <laughs> yeah. it, it continues to appear that that's going to be the case. You do that against Boston. You wake up from your little slumber in the, in the second period, you're down three, nothing. They will, they will, you know, they'll assassinate you. They will take mm -hmm. a knife to your throat and kill you. That, and that, and that, and that's, that's the thing. It's like, I mean, that team, that, that team has that mentality and the Leafs, you know, I think they that they can, know. Yeah, they. I don't. I don't know if they if they have it deep in. They have. I think they have more talent than Boston, but I don't sure. know if they have that killer instinct. How do you get that killer instinct, Mike? Is it something that has to develop within? You have your core group of guys all buying into that mindset, wanting nothing more than to win. I don't know if these kids are young. They're learning. They're understanding. They're coping. They're grinding. 
Are they ready to win? Are they ready to kick the shit out of their opponents and win Stanley Cups? Are they ready? Well, I mean, you know, and they lost one of their, you know, one of the players that actually does, you know, hit and stand up physically in Kadri last night. He gets he gets hit by Vince Dunn late in the first period and, and doesn't come back. And it was said that he had a concussion. And the funny thing is, it's like, you know, Vince Dunn, uh, who's not exactly you know, Wendell Clark was running around like a junkyard dog yesterday, hitting, you know, he, he hit, uh, hit Kadri, he hit Connor Brown. And really, again, there's nobody on this team to hold them accountable. I mean, Muzzin threw a great check against Patrick Maroon, but he's the, you know, how do you know a leaf is, uh, what, how do you know which leaf is checking? Well, it's but Jake Muzzin because nobody else does. I noticed last night, the blues, they're, they're big. They're feeling good. 11 straight. Really, the Leafs should have beat them last night. The odds were against the Blues winning an 11th straight, especially against the team of the stature of the Leafs. And the Leafs couldn't do it. I mean, that says more about the Leafs than the, the Blues. But anyway, the Blues were all over the place. They're firing on all cylinders. And it's, a, it's amazing. The Leafs, for as talented as they are, man, that's a lot of these guys are, are pretty fragile out there. You can't take the pants off of everybody, especially in the playoffs. You're going to have to get physical. You brought up Wendell Clark. I, I see that guy on like Leafs Nation Network, and I think to myself, what a throwback and what a player the Leafs would benefit from if you had a Wendell Clark-type player on this team right now. I also think how much a lot of the, the sweetheart fans who hate anything physical, who think this is just a tactical game, must think that Wendell, Wendell Clark is a disgusting player. I how, mean, how disgusting he must be as a well, hockey player when they see him destroy guys but score, you know, 300-plus goals. And it's sad because Wendell Clark is a beautiful player not a disgusting player. Yeah, I mean, and you can you could rattle off not just Wendell but Gary Roberts and, and Darcy Tucker in terms of the type of players that I think would be, you know, they, a spark, like a talented player in terms of offense but also a spark plug and providing a physical aspect. And that's really missing. And, you know, like right now the physical players on the Leafs right now are Jake Muzzin, are Zach Hyman and Nazem Kadri. Now, I don't think Kadri is going to be out long. It didn't look like a serious blow that he took yesterday. They moved Nylander to center. I have to say, in the first period, the fourth line was taken to the cleaners. On uh, they they were stuck in the defensive zone for about two minutes on on one shift, and I, I don't know if it was against the the Blues fourth line, but you know, they couldn't get the puck. Uh, back Parland home, uh, Freddie Gauthier and and Connor Brown. And one concern, you know, if if Kadri's situation is a little longer term, you really don't have a lot of center depth. You're yeah. you're, mo you're moving Nylander to the middle, and then it's Gauthier or or Lindholm. And again, this might spark the Leafs to you know go and get that veteran yep. center before the deadline. The fourth line is a complementary unit, but the fourth line has to be capable. Par Lindholm and Freddie Goche are not hoisting a Stanley Cup with this team. And Connor Brown, I think he's a third-line guy. He could probably play second line in places considering his talent. Mm -hmm. But you wonder if the further down he's pressed, um, how he begins to tune out feeling that he should be. I mean, he might be one of those guys who feels like his, his quality is redundant on this Maple Leafs team, and, and he's not getting a fair shake. So I don't know where his head is at. You need a crew that believes in being the fourth line and believes in making a difference. Par Lindholm and, and Freddie Goche, God bless him. I like Freddie Goche, too. I've seen some interviews with him on Leafs Nation Network. He's a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. But um, and I, I, we, have to, we can't put all the emphasis on the fourth line. We're talking no. about the fourth line for what it is. These guys are not a championship fourth line, and it's not their fault. This team might not even be a championship team right now. So I don't, and I think Kyle Dubas knows that. I mean, I think that that's one of the reasons why any deal he's made, uh, at least in terms of the major variety like Muzzin, was for more than one year. He can't, he's not, I don't think he's going out and expending, uh, you know, significant mm -hmm. assets to get players who are going to be rentals. You know, if he gets somebody for next to nothing, I'm sure they'll, they'll do that. But, you know, Kyle Clifford, who's been talked about, Luke Len Denning has been talked about, Brett Pesci has been talked about, all have term on their contracts. So he's, he will give up assets if it's a player that will help them for more than a year. And I, I think that, you know, the fourth line is the fourth line. They have options there. Tyler Innes can, can step in, but I, 
just don't think, I mean, Lindholm is in the lineup because of penalty killing. I don't know why Gauthier is in the lineup. He doesn't really contribute anything other than he's a big body on a team with not a lot of big bodies. And that he has to do more than that to be an asset. And I don't think he's an asset right now, but it's this team's problem is not just a bad fourth line. It's a completely inconsistent roster that sleeps half the time and Good then Lord. impresses us half the time. Too much Freddie Goche. Too little John Tavares and Austin Matthews, your superstars when the chips are down and the manpower is down. So what's Mike Babcock going to do about this? The players haven't been playing that great, and it doesn't seem like Mike Babcock is f- facilitating a way out of this average play. Mike, last word to you. Yeah, I mean, this is it is going to be a concern, and if we – you know, look at the standings right now and with the point they are two points behind the Bruins with a game in hand. So this is going to be a nip and tuck battle for the last six to seven weeks of the regular season, but it's going to get a little bit stale because you know who you're going to play. And then you're just focusing on one thing or actually you're focusing on the Bruins and you're focusing on getting your sh- your stuff in order. And they really have to do that. Um, and I think maybe after the deadline, once all the moves have made been made, or and or not made, then they'll settle down and and concentrate on what they need to concentrate on for the playoffs. But right now, I think they're inconsistent and a little disappointing. But they're still, you know, one of the best teams in the league. They certainly are. On to the next one. Talk to you soon, Mike. Thanks, Norman. The Leafs combo is brought to you by Vanguard Northeast Realty. With over 15 years' experience, Vanguard provides superior level of service for commercial real estate tenants and owners. For more information, visit vanguardne.ca.